Hey everybody, it's good to see you again and uh, talk to you a little bit about what we've been working on and some uh, different projects that are coming up. We um, have video of us working on several different projects that relate to the 15 millimeter table that we've been designing uh, for the studio here, but um, lots of little projects are popping up and um, whole tables and, and, and stuff have been, and, you know, coming into the store uh, so that we can, you know, help people build the train they want. Anyway, we're going to start a series um, that is about rock formations for 15 millimeter, and that's what this video is about. We we start with you know cutting out the plastic card, uh, gluing the rocks to the plastic card, and then step by step we'll go through it just like we did with the hills. I do need to finish up the hills, and uh, this coming week I will probably finish the hill series. Um, with two different videos. I might do them live and it might be Thursday and then Sunday. Um, we'll see. I, I'm trying to get it all done and uh, handle all my orders and things like that also. But I did want to just introduce this video and tell you uh, a little bit about what it was about and, and just to ask you to uh, subscribe to the video uh, channel and, and like and share this video if you can. Uh, all of that stuff will really help us grow the channel and uh, accomplish more, maybe get a second camera. I'm still, I, this is a little bit older video. I, I filmed this probably about, I don't know, uh, back uh, in January, February of this year. So several months ago. And and the problem is, is that I'm still playing around with how to film the best way for you guys to see. So there's a moment or two that's off camera when I'm doing something and I apologize for that. Uh, but just bear with me and if you have, um, uh, constructive criticism I'm more than willing to listen to it um, but you know I, I want to make sure that this channel kind of shows you some different things that you can do uh, to make epic terrain for your table for your home for your studio for your shop um, you know we have helped people that are just doing something at their house with their buddies um, and you know maybe their family and, and playing D&D &D or some kind of tabletop game a lot of the projects that I'm showing currently deal with 15 millimeter uh, terrain because I play a lot of Flames of War and uh, you know the Battlefront miniature stuff, um, Team Yankee, things like that, but uh, there's lots of uses for this terrain uh, and, and you just need to, you know, I hope you see these videos as inspiration for you to do whatever you need to do for the terrain and your table, your home, your studio, your house, your next tournament. Um, I hope it's inspirational and that you're really getting good stuff out of it. And I look forward to, you know, uh, walking you through this project. This project will have seven steps, I believe, before it's all over. Uh, seven different videos. But, um, man, is it, it's crazy good. I love it. Um, I love showing people how to do this train. It's going to be awesome. Uh, I look forward to talking to you soon. Bye. All right. So um, you just want to kind of follow your line doesn't have to be perfect. Remember, you're making an organic shape and um, you definitely want to, you know, not be completely worried about if it's exact because nothing in nature is exact, really. Well, at least in my world, some people have exact things going on in nature. Um, anyway, I'm just going to kind of, you know, script through this cutting process, trying to cut away from my hand, not towards my hand. You know, I wouldn't want my hand over here and cutting like this. Once again, that's one of those safety things. But I'm scoring it probably two to three times on my line that I've drawn. And then I'll break it at those spots. Um, I don't have to cut all the way through it because the scoring will help me break it naturally at the spots I want. That piece right there, I'm gonna have to work out just a little bit, but most of this other should just come right off. And then this last piece. And then I had this stubborn piece that's really thin at that one spot. So I'm probably going to have to cut it a little bit deeper to get that piece off. And there we go. Now, now that I have it in this spot, right, 
I've got my organic shape. Pretty happy with that. Um, it's okay if it looks rough on the back. It's, all that's okay. Um, you know, you, it doesn't matter if it's rough at this spot. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to just start cleaning up these edges. Like I said, cut away from you if possible. That is the best policy. And I'm just going to clean up so that I have a somewhat clean edge at this point to the terrain piece. Like I said, this is, you know, maybe a six by six or six by seven piece because I'm doing 15 millimeter. I don't have to have it to be really big. If I was making this for 28 millimeter, um, I would probably make it somewhere in eight by eight to a 12 by 12. If it was a big piece of terrain, you might make it 14 by 14 or 16 by 16. Um, but you'd have to be making like a really big piece of area terrain. Most of the time you'll find that making something over 12 by 12 for 28 millimeter is more than enough uh, without any problems. And so I'm just gonna clean up this edge a little bit. Now that I have it clean, I'm going to go back into the back side here and you see how I have that funny edge. I'm just gonna kind of clean that up just a little bit with the edge of my blade. Um, and make sure that if there's no like nicks or anything that would, you know, catch when I'm moving it around the, the table. I don't want there to be anything that would catch it off on it. And anything that's kind of a, a mess, I would uh, do like that. Now, uh, then what I do is I actually go back in and I start to scallop the edge just like this because that gives it a really natural look to the edge and you don't want it to be a repeating perfect pattern. Some of these need to be longer, some of them need to be shorter, uh, but you're just kind of working that edge uh, with, the, with the blade to kind of give it a natural look. And see right here where I had that little spot that was funny? I just kind of even that out and then I work back into the edge. If you have something, and I can show you another one. See here where it's, it's, it's where I broke it. Um, you can see that funny edge. I'm just gonna make sure that I whack that off. And then, as you can see, I'm just gonna scallop the edge so that I get out that broken piece. Just keep working around the whole piece of terrain trying to not make these even as nothing is even in nature. And uh, all right, now I'm gonna look back through it and just make sure anything that I think is a point or a square or too round, too perfect, I'm gonna work back into um, but as you can see now I have this scalloped edge all the way around my piece now the next thing I do is once I have the scalloped edge is I like to take my piece and um, I actually hash mark it and what I mean by that is I'm actually drawing a line and I'm gonna hold that a little closer you can see where I'm making a line with my exacto knife. You can also do this with a file. But what I need to do is to score this top of this piece of terrain because this plastic card happens to be really slick. And when you go to put sand and glue on it in a minute, what happens is you won't have enough texture for the glue to stick to. And so you just need to score the surface as much as possible in different directions so that you have a little bit of texture for spackle, glue, sand to stick to. I will be putting a little bit of spackle on this. Um, oh, there we go. Sorry about that. I will be using a little bit of spackle on this to you know, really make it exactly what I want it to be for this 15 millimeter. It also gives it a little bit of height. And just like I did on the other piece that I had, 
I could end up, you know, using a thicker piece on top of it to give it height and a little bit of just, you know, a little bit of oomph to make the terrain more interesting when it's on the table. Um, and so, um, you know, this piece goes with that piece and it goes just like that. And so I will show you with my Stug again, my 15 millimeter tank, is I can put a base of guys or a vehicle here and I can put a base of guys and a vehicle there and this is a good piece of terrain if I can fit some things around it. Now, what I'm doing, as I told you uh, at the beginning, is that um, I'm actually doing rock formations uh, with this and I'll show you, these are just some stones uh, that I got at a landscaping um, company, you know, a local landscaper, you might have a creek or a river nearby. If you do get these out of the river, uh, you definitely want them to be fully and completely dry before you use them. Uh, do stick them in the sun for several days uh, to get them dry and try not to get them wet at all because um, it will end up making a mess with your terrain if you don't do it. But I could take a piece like this, I can add two to three rocks at different angles, and all of a sudden this would be a good piece of terrain. I still could get a base in between the rocks, a base over here, and maybe a base there, and it still looked like an interesting piece of terrain. I could also put the rocks on top of each other like this, and then have a little bit more room. Um, I will probably opt for this as for this piece because this is what I envisioned when I was doing it. Is actually put all the rocks up there on that side so that there's blockage of line of sight, but I can still get two bases here and depending on how this piece of terrain is faced, um, it would do. And so um, the next thing I'm gonna do, you know, now that I have a couple of pieces of ready to go for rocks, and, and things like that. Um, I'm gonna actually use, uh, what, I, what I use is Power Grip. Uh, it's by Loctite, it's an all-purpose glue. You just wanna make sure that you're using some kind of interior construction glue that says all-purpose. If you do that, you know this will work. I just happen to like Loctite for this um, kind of project. And I'm just gonna take this and put a little bit down here on this side, this is for my piece of terrain here, uh, my, my second piece of plastic card. I'm actually going to, you know, move that around a little bit, kind of squish it into it, and then set that piece. Um, and then I'm going to do it with the rocks that I have. I'm actually going to put a little glue at the bottom of the rock. Stick that on the piece. And any glue that kind of seeps out, I'm going to use on the next piece of rock. Um, so, there you go. And then this is my last piece of rock here. Put a little glue on it. And I'm going to stick it right there. And then what I'm going to do is anywhere that there's a, a little bit of the glue coming out, I'm just going to kind of work that away. Once again, this cleans up with water, um, so it's not a big deal. You might also, like, take your hobby knife, and you notice kind of in between right here, I have a little bit of glue sticking out, so I'm just gonna spread that out a little bit, work it around. Same thing here, let's just kind of move that around, so, and, I, and then, you know, I've got these pieces uh, ready to dry. Um, uh, once again, uh, with this type of glue, this all-purpose glue that I'm using, I like to wait 24 hours before I do the next step. Uh, and I am gonna do one more of these while we're talking. Um, I'm going to find my rocks um, that I want. It's a pretty big one. I think if I just use 
two on this one. But I'll be good. Um, two rocks, and once again, I just want to know that I could put a base of troops or two on the piece of terrain. That would be good. And so um, that is what's going to go on this one. And uh, once again, I'm just going to glue the bottom of the rock and squish it down onto the terrain. And you notice over here, I'm actually letting it poke off the piece of terrain just a little bit. That's perfectly legitimate to do. It gives it more interest if you break the plane of the terrain piece. You just don't want it to poke out so much um, that it's a problem and or would break off later. If I stuck it halfway off or something like that, it would, um, it would, you know, actually be detrimental to the piece of terrain long term because it might break off. Um, and once again, you can kind of see I have just a little bit of the glue like kind of poking out. I'm just going to smooth that out with my knife. Same thing here. I'm just going to get in there and kind of smooth that up just a little bit. It doesn't have to be perfect. Remember, we're going to put sand on this. So the sand will cover up anything. So I'm just cleaning that edge up just a little bit. If I was worried about this edge, I could just shove a little bit of that extra glue in there. And then as you can see, I can just work up the rock with the glue a little bit. And what that does is it makes it so that, um, you know, the, the glue is really in there on that crevice. And you're, you know, you know it's got a good adherence to the rock. All right, so that's, you know, this is one piece and this is the other piece uh, right here. And so now I've just created two pieces of 15 millimeter rock terrain. Um, if I was making a table for 15 millimeter or 28 millimeter that I wanted this kind of rock terrain on, I would probably do four to six of these pieces to make that kind of carry on the table. Um, I will probably end up making, uh, just looking through it, I think I'm gonna make five or six of these pieces for my 15 millimeter table. Um, and then it would make it look like there was a theme, it's kind of rocky theme uh, to the terrain on that table. Anyway, uh, I hope that helps. We'll get back to this project um, on the next video where we actually start to put the sand on it just like we've done the others and then talk about priming it and what you do if you want to leave the rocks the natural color that they are or if you want to paint them and that's really up to uh, you know the terrain maker um, if you want to end up painting the rocks or if you like them the natural color that they are. I know a lot of people use slate. Um, in fact, I have, um, I'll just show you this. Um, sometimes when you're doing rock formations like this, you might actually pick up slate chips um, from, once again, I can get these from a local landscaper that, uh, you know, a, a five pound bag of this stuff will last forever with terrain pieces. And then what you could do is you could just work these uh, pieces of slate in and around, uh, you know, bigger rock formations, you know, so that it kind of carries the theme and then in the sand. So you could work smaller pieces into big rocks like this if you want to, or like I said, you could just go about it with sand. But anyway, in the next one, we'll put the sand on and maybe a little bit of the slate, let you see the difference and see how you like it. Talk to you soon.